everyone in this video we are going to talk about thrust and pressure now it's a common observation for all of us that when we poke a balloon with a pin then it pops immediately but when we uh, press the same balloon against several pins there are a lot of pins here and if we press the balloon against these pins we do not find the same thing that is the balloon doesn't pop in this case now what's the reason behind it we have we had only one pin but the balloon pops here in this case but here uh, even if we have so many pins lying on the floor and even if we are pressing the balloon against these many pins it is not popping in any way so this is a question that is a balloon pops immediately when we poke it with a pin but when we press it against several pins it doesn't why now the reason behind this happening can be understood when we study the concept of thrust and pressure now let's say there is a wooden box lying on the floor or on the table and we have to apply force onto this box now this force we can apply in uh, many directions for example we can apply a force in this direction towards the corner of the box and also we can apply the force from the uh, from top of the box and also we can apply the force in any other direction like this but there is one such force among all these which acts perpendicular to the top surface of this box and that is this force so here this force is uh, what which is perpendicular to the top surface of the box now here this is the force which has a separate name for itself this force is what we call as the thrust now this thrust is a force but in a particular direction that is perpendicular to the surface on which it is acting so the thrust the force acting on a body perpendicular to its surface is called thrust and the si unit of thrust is also newton because thrust is also a force but in a particular direction so this is what we call as the thrust now for example uh, we have a nail suppose and we use a hammer to make this nail dig into the wooden block lying on the floor here now when we want to do that we have to hit this nail with the hammer now on doing that we apply a thrust to this nail with the help of this hammer now why do we call this force that we apply here as thrust it is because the force that we are applying with the help of this hammer is perpendicular to the top surface of this nail so here this force is acting perpendicular to the surface and that's why we call this force as thrust now let's say we have a wooden block and we press it we press against it with the help of our thumb like this with a particular thrust or with a particular force which is in the perpendicular direction to the surface of the wooden block now uh, on doing this we do not see a particular effect that comes into picture after we press it the thumb ne uh, never digs into this wooden block or as such we don't see any effect because of this thrust here but let us repeat the same procedure but in a slightly different way now in the second case what we do is we press press a pin like this or this is a notice pin uh, notice board pin and we use the same thumb and press this wooden block uh, with this pin like this now what happens in this case now when we apply the same thrust when we apply the same thrust with the same thumb but on this pin then the pin digs into the wooden block like this so here in this case with the same thrust we see a different effect or a larger effect now one thing that is different here in both the cases is that the area of contact now in the first case the area of contact uh, between the thumb and the wooden block was large as compared to the area of contact with the pin 
uh, of the pin with the wooden block. So here we have a small area of contact. You can uh, very, uh, see very well that how small is the area of contact in that case as compared to the first case. But we see a larger effect in the second case as compared to the first case where we have used only the thumb to apply the thrust. Now this difference in the effect even though we use the same amount of thrust or we apply the same amount of thrust for this activity we got a different amount of effect in both the cases. Now this is because of the pressure. The pressure in both the cases is different from each other. So that is what makes the difference in the effect that we see in both the cases. So what is pressure actually? Now pressure is the force acting perpendicularly which is the thrust on a unit area of the object. So force upon area or thrust upon area is what we call as pressure. Now in this video we may use or we will be using the terms like force and thrust interchangeably. Uh, it is because when we talk about force here, we are actually talking about the force which is acting perpendicular to the surface uh, of uh, contact. So that is why we can uh, interchangeably use the terms force and thrust here. So here this is the formula by, which, uh, by using which we can calculate the pressure or amount of pressure that is exerted on a particular area or on a particular object. Now as we see here that pressure is inversely proportional to the area of contact. So here the area is what matters. Now when we have lesser area of contact we have a greater pressure or a greater effect as we have seen before. The area of contact of the pin and the wooden block was very very small as compared to the area of contact between the thumb and the wooden block. And the effect was larger in the case of the pin rather than the thumb. Now from this we can conclude a few things. That is the effect of thrust or pressure depends inversely on the ob uh, area of the object on which it acts. And also the same thrust can produce different effects depending upon the area over which it acts. And this is what we have seen before. And again, when a thrust acts over a large area of an object, it produces a small pressure. But if it acts upon a smaller area of an object, then it produces a large pressure. And this produces a larger effect as well. Now, for example, we can study this by this example. That is, when you stand on a mattress, then what happens is your area uh, on which you are applying the force perpendicularly or the thrust is less in this case. Now what happens is the depression that you get is more. Now here the area of contact is small and thus there is a larger depression. You see a great depression here uh, on the mattress, right? Now this de larger depression represents the larger pressure as well. Now on the same, in the same case when you lie down on the mattress what happens is the area on which you apply the thrust has become greater compared to the prior case. Now in this case what happens is the, the area of contact is large and that is why there is a small depression. The depression in this case is very small as uh, compared to the previous case. It is uh, uh, clearly apparent here from the two images. So here since there is a small depression there is a, a small pressure which is acting in this case since the area is larger. So even from this observation you can conclude that the pressure the amount of pressure exerted on a particular area depends upon the area itself or the amount of area itself. When the area is smaller the effect is larger or the pressure is larger and when the area is larger the effect is smaller or the pressure is smaller. Now what's the unit we use to measure pressure? Let us calculate. Now we have the formula for pressure as th thrust per unit area. Now this is the 
formula for pressure and you, on using this formula we can find out what is the unit of pressure so the si unit of pressure is uh, newton by meter squared so here we have just replaced the unit of thrust that is newton and the unit of area that is meter squared so the si unit of pressure turns out to be newton per meter squared now this newton per meter squared has a particular name for itself which is pascal so 1 newton per meter squared is equal to 1 pascal which is denoted by 1 pa now 1 pascal uh, as is apparent from this description over here is the pressure when 1 newton of force is applied on an area of 1 meter squared so that amount of pressure is what we call as 1 pascal so with this we have come to the end of this video and I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.